So I have a function here, h of n, and let's say that it explicitly defines the terms of a sequence. So let me make a little, let me make a quick, a quick table here. So we have n, and then we have h of n. When n is equal to one, h of n is negative 31 minus seven times one minus one, which is going to be, this is just going to be zero, so it's going to be negative 31. When n is equal to two, it's going to be negative 31 minus seven times two minus one, so two minus one. Well, this is just going to be one, so it's negative 31 minus seven, which is equal to negative 38. When n is equal to three, it's gonna be negative 31 minus seven times three minus one, which is just two. So we're gonna subtract seven twice. So it's gonna be negative 31 minus 14, which is equal to negative 45. So what do we see happening here? Well, we're starting at negative 31, and then we keep subtracting, we keep subtracting negative seven. We keep subtracting negative seven from that. In fact, we subtract negative seven one less than the term, uh, we subtract negative seven one less times than the term we're dealing with. If we're dealing with the third term, we subtract negative seven twice. If we're dealing with the second term, we're we subtract negative seven once. So this is all nice, but what I want you to do now is pause the video and see if you can define this exact same sequence. So the sequence here is you start at negative 31 and you keep subtracting negative seven. So negative 38, negative 45, the next one is gonna be negative 52, and you go on and on and on, you keep subtracting negative seven. Can we define this, this sequence in terms of a recursive function? So why don't you have a go at that? All right, let's try to define it in terms of a recursive function. Let's just call that g of n. So g of n, and in some ways a recursive function is easier. Because you could say, okay, look, the first term when n is equal to one, if n is equal to one, let me just write it, if n is equal to one, if n is equal to one, What's g of n gonna be? It's gonna be negative 31, negative 31. And if n, if n is greater than one and a whole number, so this is gonna be defined for all positive integers, and whole, and whole number, well it's going to be, it's just going to be the previous term, so g of n minus one, minus seven. Minus seven. So we're saying, hey, if we get a, if we, if we, if we're just picking an arbitrary term, we just have to look at the previous term and then subtract and then subtract seven. And it all works out nice and nice and easy because you keep looking at previous, previous, previous terms all the way, all, all the way until you get to the base case, which is when n is equal to one, and then you can build up back from that, and you get this exact same sequence. Let's do another example, but let's go the other way around. So here we have a we have a sequence defined recursively, and I want, to I want to create a function that defines the sequence explicitly. So let's think about this. So one way to think about it, this sequence, when n is equal to one, it starts at 9.6, and then every term is the previous term minus 0 0.1. So the, the second term is gonna be the previous term minus 0 0.1, so it's gonna be 9.5. Then you're gonna go to 9.4 then you're gonna to go to 9.3. We could keep going on and on and on. Or if we want, we can make a little table here. And we could say, this is n, this is h of n. And you see, when n is equal to one, h of n is 9.6. When n is equal to two, we're now in this case over here, it's gonna be h of two minus one. So it's gonna be h of one minus 0 0.1. Well, it's just gonna be this minus 0 0.1, which is going to be 9.5. When h is three, it's gonna be h of two, h of two minus 0 0.1, minus 0 0.1. Well, h of two is right over here. You subtract a 10th, you're gonna get 9.4. Exactly what we saw over here. So let's see if we can pause the video now and define this, create a function that, that constructs or defines this arithmetic sequence explicitly. Here it was recursively, we wanted to define it explicitly. All right, so let's just call it, I don't know, let's just call it f of n. And we could say, look, it's gonna be 9.6, but we're gonna subtract, we're gonna subtract 0 0.1 depending, a certain number of times depending on what term we're talking about. So we're gonna subtract 0 0.1 but how many times are we gonna subtract it as a function of n? 
Well, let's see. If we're talking about the first term, we subtract zero times. The second term, we subtract one time. The third term, we subtract two times. The fourth term, we subtract three times. So whatever term we're talking about, we subtract that term minus one times. So if we're talking about the nth term, we subtract n my, we subtracted this value n minus one times. And you can verify that this is going to work. When n is equal to one, this term here is going to be zero. So this whole thing's going to be zero, you get 9.6. When n is equal to two, two minus one, you subtract 0.1 one time. 9.6 minus 0.1 is 9.5. And you could keep doing that. You could draw a table and evaluate these if you want to. But the key thing is, you're starting at 9.6 and you're subtracting 0.1 one fewer times than the term you're looking at. So if you're looking at the, if n is equal to, this is n is equal to four, well you're gonna subtract 0.1 three times. And you see that. Subtract 0.1 once, subtract 0.1 twice, Subtract 0.13 times.